Support WrestleTalk! Donate on Patreon. Will the revival and more leave WWE? I'm Ollie Davis. This is the other one, Luke Owen. It's Grey Day. <laughs> it is Grey Looks Day. Looks like we both come coordinated in comfy grey jumpers. Do you want me to take my cardigan off so we can differentiate ourselves? I don't care how cold it is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is a bit nippy down here, Take I'll be it off. It's getting sexy up in here now. I'm going to show off my cool t-shirt, though. And welcome to the Saturday Wrestle Ramble. Oh, that desk is cold. Where? There was some fun news this week. Wasn't there? Just. Yes. So we're, 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 honest to God story, before all the Raw stuff happened, we were going to see Glass at the cinema. <laughs> yeah. And we, we were we were sitting down, eating pizza, before going to see Glass. And New which, York Fold. Yeah, which highly recommended. Is, is out now, because it came out in theatres on Friday. Yes, yes. And today's Saturday. And Laurie was just, you know, he wasn't really paying attention to us. He as, was just on his phone. As he often does. Yeah, and he just said, hey, The Revival apparently asked for their WWE release. Hey, guys, I'm going to interrupt your boring conversation with something much more interesting. You're talking about what you're going to do this weekend? Boring. boring. Yeah, and uh, I, it, I like stuff like this. Not only is it salacious, it's gossipy. It could potentially have huge ramifications. These might be the first act to say no WWE we're going to try and make something better of ourselves in this new upstart promotion AEW which is where all the speculation is that they're going to go Yeah, and also it's nice to go to bed knowing what I'm going to title the news the next day oh that is always nice yeah, isn't it yeah it's I like, like that it's like when the Observer gets released nice and early on a Thursday because I can prep stuff then for Friday Super News it's very good it's a very specific thing yeah. I think just for us and other wrestling news YouTubers but yeah that's good so The Revival they uh, the, the, this originally came out from Sean Ross Sapp who's just excellent at covering this sort of stuff he did a really good job with all the Enzo Amore stuff when that broke last year sort of the year anniversary now isn't it mm. it was the wasn't that the Monday before Royal Rumble it was the Raw 25th anniversary show it was oh, the day of crikey I actually forgot Raw 25 was a yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I wish I could. <laughs> and the, the, his article said that it was very uncommittal. It said, look, I've heard, I've heard people say there's a feeling backstage that the revival asked for their release after a backstage incident. Mm-hmm. Back, I, when I heard backstage incident, I thought, was there a... Well, did Sun Sin Cara get in a fight? He is, well, he's training again in the performance centre. Mm. It could have very well been him. But no, it seems like the incident they're referring to is just the revival going up to management and saying, we're done. Now, Dave Meltzer then followed that up on Wrestling Observer Radio, said they did ask for their release. That's what he's claiming, uh, 100%. And then in the Observer... He noted that it was literally as soon as their match with Lucha House Party was over, they walked up and asked for their release while in their gear. Which that is, is bowling. It's a pretty badass move, really, isn't it? To so just walk out the like walk back and be like, we'd like to be released now. Yeah, I don't know if there's any documentation involved in asking for your release. I'm sure there's a formal letter. So where would one put that? In one's pants. Yes. <laughs> so I, in my mind, Scott and Dash, they walk up to Triple H or Vince, whoever's at Gorilla. Michael Hayes, and they they reach into their pants like Mick Foley with Mr. Socko and pull out a baby oil sodden, rather smelly yeah. letter saying, I, I'm formally requesting my release from my contract. Absolutely. But it should be noted, because uh, I'm going to bring up the quote here now, Revival. Um, so if, if it, if it disproves if it disproves my baby oil pant theory uh, okay, yeah, I don't so want to hear the revival after their win over Kalisto at Metalik on the 13th of January Raw while still in their gear asked for their release as of press time they haven't been given their release the word we got is that nobody who asks for their release right now is expected to be given it for obvious reasons what are those obvious reasons, Luke? Well, what? Well, one would assume it's because there's a little upstart called AEW that's sort of lurking in the background, really annoying WWE fanboys at the moment because it's in the news a lot. Mm. And the word is that WWE a little bit... Of, like, I also heard... I can't remember where I heard this now. That... Um, I think Meltzer might have said this on Wrestling Observer Radio that WWE are telling a lot of independent wrestlers we're going to give you we've got really really good competitive deals that we will offer you very soon. Don't sign with anyone else just yet 
because we may want to offer you something at some point. Oh, that is. I would not. That is. <laughs> that is an offer from a wolf. Yes, because I think that WWE, particularly with all the Khan's money, are a bit concerned. Mm. They, although they, uh, no TV deal has been announced. We have heard through Chris Jericho that it is very, very good TV deals with primetime TV. Um, and, you know, Jericho has chosen to go to AEW over going back to WWE. That they, they, they might cause some concern. For them as a company or the wrestling landscape and therefore they want to try and tie down the people that they've got and that might include because it's not just the revival that have reportedly asked for their release it was also mike and maria canellis mike uh Kinellis hasn't really done anything since coming to wwe he so on cage match he's listed as having four matches on smackdown yeah, but he Since moved to 205 in 2017. Live. But he did move to 205 Live. When was that, though? A couple of months ago? <sighs> it might have been longer than that. Mm. I don't know. But that would require someone to watch 205 Live, which don't, doesn't happen very often. Well, he, uh, he, after he joined, he had a great debut at Money in the Bank. Yeah. Uh, with Maria Canellis with... This, this is, is the greatest, greatest love I've ever known. I'm burning up in your love, your love. Brilliant. That that should have made him a main eventer right off the I bat, know. really. That, for me, was already in the mix of CFO Money's best ever work. Oh, absolutely. With Glorious and Nakamura's theme. Yeah. I love that, that when, song. That was when they were right at a peak of their creative high. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they've, they haven't reached that since. No, no. Um, a difficult second album time now, I it think, is, for yeah. them. It's folklore and superstition. So, can that? But then, Canellis was that they never really decided what their act would be, and it became like Maria met Mike in a gift card store, <laughs> and he's not actually a trained wrestler; he's just a guy that Maria found. It was just such a bad gimmick, and then Mike just sort of disappeared from telly, and Maria along with him. Maria was pregnant. There's that reason, but then Mike, as you know, publicly documented this himself, had a quite a big battle overcoming a painkiller addiction. Mm-hmm. So well done for him for getting over Absolutely. that. Now he's on 205 Live. But yes, the the pro wrestling sheet report. So it's crazy that these two things came out at the same time. Just it feels like longer, but really only eight days removed from that AEW rally. It was. It's yeah. changed. It's already changed the universe as jericho Jericho would say uh but they that the exact quote from pro wrestling sheet is the canela sai have been unhappy with the way they've been used in wwe for a while and finally made the decision a few weeks ago to request their releases now i'm sure with the revival and with many others there are a lot of people who are unhappy with how they've been used in WWE for a while. Oh, Duke. All you've got to do is check out Zack Ryder, uh, Ryder's Twitter, I suppose. Mm. He went through all of 2018 without having a match on Raw, and then, like complete dicks, they booked him for it on the Christmas show or whatever it was. I like think the, it was the, the New last, Year's the Eve. New Year, that's yeah. it, it was the New Year's Eve show. He could have had a whole year, but like they had to ruin it, didn't they? Yeah, they couldn't even let him be bad <laughs> Uh, but then, so you were talking about Meltzer saying that WWE won't let people leave the company. And this, unfortunately, is quite a quite a nasty, in my opinion, business practice that they've employed before with Rey Mysterio and Daniel Bryan. Rey Mysterio was famously sort of made to sit out. They froze his contract whenever he was injured, and that meant, like, his contract would never expire. Like, what a crazy... What, like, employment role to find yourself in where, say, you take out a year contract, you get to 10 months in, you're like, oh, I'm not going to renew. And then they're like, oh, we're not going to use you yeah. for five years. Same. So your contract's frozen. So you will, in perpetuity, have two months left on your contract and you won't be able to work anyone anywhere else. It's insane. Yeah, and the same thing happened with Daniel Bryan. Mm. When he was, when he, before he re signed, was very openly talking about going elsewhere. But he couldn't because couldn't get out of a contract well his contract was going to expire though Mm. september 1st by all accounts but that could have been moved back even further because there was that period when he retired from in-ring competition and when he became a smackdown commissioner general general manager manager, my apologies where that i I, but as far as i understand that year and a bit he was out not doing anything his contract was frozen yes so really that the contract should have been up a year before. I think that's how that works in the UK. The US's employment laws are just really, really quite bad for 
whoever's the the workers are. It's, are you, you trying know. to say that corporations don't really care about their employees and only care about their bottom line? No, no. What I'm saying is that the game is wrong. You can't hate players hate playing the game, player. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that what what might happen. And this is why I think it's bizarre that the Revival have asked for their contracts releases mm. now and, and the Canalyses. Who knows when their contracts come up? But I swear I had somewhere that the Revivals were up this year. That's why they were one of like the forefront of people who could jump to AEW, as well as the F the Revival storyline on being the elite with the Young Bucks. Yeah, and that's why like people like Gallows and Anderson were also named. because, mm. And AJ Styles being another one, because those were names that have contracts that are up in January. By all accounts, AJ Styles still yet to sign a contract Ooh, with WWE. Oh, that's exciting. And, yeah, that I just don't see, with, with WWE's track record of freezing people's contracts by not using them, or like maybe going back to when the Revival were injured when they were first called up in 20, 2016, 2017? I can't remember. Yeah. It's not been a great run for them on the main roster Also, at all. WWE years just tend to sort of blur into each other. Yeah. There's only sort of like WrestleMania seemed to stand out, but every other thing, every other month could just, could be in any year. In my head, it goes 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2006, 2011, <laughs> yeah. and then now... I did, there's just Pretty big, much big, big blurs. Oh, there's huge chunks of time yeah, that yeah. could be anywhere. Well, like Daniel Bryan wrestled for all of that time, I think, in my <laughs> head. Randy Orton as oh, well. The, I think he headlined every pay-per-view yeah, around that like period. That. So I, I just... if I, Multiple very reliable sources have said the Revival have handed in their notice. Yeah, I just don't see why they did this now when there's the danger of them getting their contracts frozen when they could just wait a couple of months and go hey contracts up see you later boys well hey we're out of here off, yeah. play me off dawson exactly and they get a big piano out they, they walk up with their shiny new contracts mm. and say like here you get a sign they're like nope no thanks i've already packed my gear it's in the car no no they're wearing their gear again <laughs> in this story he produces a pen from his trunks yeah. and then throws it over his shoulder yeah maybe he itches up his nose first like, then he like an it. airhead he grabs the pay, grabs the contract and wipes his ass on it. yeah something like that so uh i I don't see the Canelisi. I mean, that would be a good get because Mike Bennett was really, really good before he went to WWE. I used to love him in Ring of Honor. He was like Maria was so good in Impact as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and if Brandy really wants to build that women's division, like to have a Maria there, not necessarily as a wrestler, but just as star presence and as a talker, mm -hmm. that'd be great. That'd be great for AEW. Um, there was another caveat to all of this, not a caveat, but a, a layer. Did you see WrestleVotes' tweet? I did not see WrestleVotes' mm. tweet. WrestleVotes, another very reliable source. They are very, very good. Yeah. Some interesting reports of multiple superstars requesting to be released by WWE. They are more than likely true. Keep in mind, however, WWE does not have to honour those requests. A mid-card superstar dating during the middle of 2018 asked for his release, and WWE refused. <laughs> Who could that have been? I bet you it was Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder, I mean, there's although, although he did say mid card, which would definitely that would discredit yeah, Zack Ryder. Right Zack Ryder is a bit lower down. I Meltzer said something on uh, the Observer Radio that Almas was close to quitting, but they get they started giving him a push, and that was oh. part of the reason he stayed. So I don't know, like mid card 2018 could very well be. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would make sense. Uh, but yeah, I it's it's a it's a very interesting time and. It looks like just a week after that first rally, the floodgates might already be opening with a lot of disgruntled WWE wrestlers going, jumping ship already. Chris Jericho's uh, podcast this week is kind of a fascinating listen. Mm. Very grandiose on Jericho's part because it does ma he makes himself sound like, well, the whole reason AEW is working is because I've signed. And it, it, the whole episode, really, the, the reason why New Japan's doing so well at the moment is because I'm there. I had a five-star match with Kenny Omega last year. I don't know if I mentioned that. <laughs> yeah. In the third yeah. person. I'm pretty sure that New Japan are now selling out the Tokyo Dome because I'm on the card. You're doing it wrong. Because Chris Jericho okay. is on the card. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it literally, it's, oh yeah, in the third in person. In the third person. <laughs> but it's a fascinating lesson because the way that he sort of talks about AEW really is of this like incredibly new and exciting venture that could, 
actually change the wrestling landscape. He kind of like listed off all of these new upstart companies that he hears so much about. Like every few months or so, it feels like there's a new company that's at the woodwork. There's a new company here. There's a new company there. And they're always the ones going like, we're going to do something. We're going to do something different. This, that, and the other. But none of them ever like go anywhere. But he said like, this is the first time that it's ever really felt like that is, this is going to cause a change. Mm. This is going to change the way that the wrestling landscape is. And that's, that's very exciting. Should we get on with some crap gimmicks? If you're wondering to yourself what the heck is a crap gimmick, well, that's a segment we do here each and every Saturday on the Wrestle Ramble, where you, the SWAF Nation, send to us your crap gimmick suggestions, and we, the bookers of crap gimmick wrestling, decide whether we want to sign them or not. Nearly got through that whole sentence there without flubbing a line. But... I was even thinking, Luke's doing well I know. doing this. Yeah. And then you didn't. Talking's not really my forte either. You you were you were just a few words away. I know. It's like Castlevania. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many people are going to get that. Luke, <laughs> Probably Luke. <laughs> not, because it was a conversation we had yesterday on the tube. <laughs> Luke Luke can't complete the last, the penultimate ep- uh, episode. It's, uh, yeah, but essentially, it's the second to last level on Castlevania. I, I, I get killed uh, in the hallway before you get to death, and then eventually... I can get to death, and then I, I lose when I'm fighting mm. death. Because the ideal way to play the final level, the, the penultimate level, is to have holy water, which you get at the start of the level, and make your whole way through there. So you kind of got to complete that whole level in one run. Because otherwise, it's very difficult to beat death at the end. And I've been doing it for 20 years, and I've just never been able to finish it. I'm glad we cleared up that anecdote. Well, you started yeah. it. Uh, the, you know what's exciting about Crap Gimmick Wrestling? Now that the Patreon relaunch has been announced, mm. that if we get to 1,500 Patreons, Pod Swafters, Swaf Nation, after... No, that doesn't count in this audience. But the... Well, they we, will do. Because they watch the, they watch the YouTube show... And then listen to uh, the yeah. outro. After Swafters. After Swafters. After Swafters. After Swafters. <laughs> we, look, after, if we get to 1,500 Patreons, we, thanks to some new developments behind the scenes, we are going to run a live wrestling show. We're not going to start a promotion. No. no, no nothing going to happen that. But we'll put on a wrestling show. We'll get in, like, a few promotions here and there and sort of curate a bunch of matches. But, hey... Maybe we get some people to do crap gimmick wrestling. We could bring some of these crap gimmicks to life. Will Ospreay as <laughs> Kaiju. Would you... Is that how you'd want to use Will Ospreay on your Incorrectly. show? Incorrectly, yes. <laughs> I'd make him do just ground-based stuff. He's good at submissions, though. Just grab... He's good at everything. Well, however you use Will will probably be It'll amazing. be a five-star yeah. match. He uh, came... A second, I believe, in like uh, Meltzer was chronicling like mm. the top like people who had the best start ratings throughout the year. I think Osprey came second or third uh, throughout He's the year. He's incredible. Very, very good. Uh, anyway, so crap gimmicks, bit like 90s, but you know the deal. Dylan Wall is uh, suggested this came in from August 7th. Backlog, got to get through them. Uh, howdy, Luke and Oliver. Name's Dylan Wall. Hope you enjoy this one. So the entrances start with the lights going out, and all you hear is the hustle and bustle. People talking loudly, and a cup of coffee being caught, being poured into a coffee cup. And then all you see is three Bs pop up on screen. Triple B. Big Bad Barista. He comes to the ramp with a snobby, snobby attitude and a hop... Deary. He comes down the ramp with a snobby attitude and a cup of hot coffee. Dressed up with thick black frame glasses, a scarf, and an I'm better than you attitude. His music is always... So, (laughs) Laurie. His music is always different and always some weird, obscure song that no one has heard of. But it changes it because it goes too mainstream. I think we have had this before. I don't remember it. Um, Anyway, you go and get the idea. Um... Yeah, his signature move is the barista bomb with the finisher, would you like room for cream? And he puts them in an armbar and an ankle lock, depending on how you want the match to go or what body part is weaker. And not all the way until you give him an answer. But because he knows better than them about coffee, he knows that you don't put cream in your coffee if you want takes the full natural flavor of coffee. So he fully locks in the move anyway. He is also known for starting factions and leaving when people join because it became too mainstream. Thank you, Luke and Oliver, for the podcast. Gives me something to listen to while I'm at work. Keep up the consistent content and great work. Work you do whenever you guys come to california stop by bakersfield where ollie can see what Mo- american monopoly pieces look like guns cowboy hats and hey love you bye i so uh, if if this has been submitted before i don't remember it no nope. um barista what's the name again barista big bad barista big bad barista it's a parody of <laughs> a hipster mm, yes which, which we've had many times before yeah 
I see it's because I've one of my first ever wrestling memes that I made and posted on a board, which never didn't get any traction, <coughs> was Batista. It was like a, a black and white photo. He was behind a coffee shop thing, and he was just standing there. It was a crudely made meme that could have been a lot. It could have been a lot better. Mm-hmm. But the idea is, it's barista. It's Batista the barista. So I, I think that's so funny. I like my idea better. <laughs> and he even used the that animal as well because the he animal calls Batista, it, because Batista because he calls himself the barista bomb. Yeah. So he was already there. I just I think he fell down a, a sort of hole there with the how you like your holds. And yeah, yeah. I also think you just fell down a hole of just being. I hate. I just hate hipsters so much. Uh, this one comes in from William Kime on August eighth. Hi, Luke, Ollie, and El Fakador. I'm a long time listener, first time submitter to the show, and love the consistent Submit. work you do. Uh, I have two crap gimmicks to pitch for you guys, but because you've only got, uh, you're only signing one a week, I may leave my other submission until later. Bracket, it's a lot longer than this one with quite a bit of fantasy booking with it. But oh, here God. is a wrestler with a crap gimmick. He would go by the name Lim Rick. He'd wear green and be Irish. And in his matches would finish with a sick drop called the Poetic. Hope you guys like it. Got the inspiration from the haiku suggestion a few weeks ago. Um, cheers for all the work. Keep up the knocking the podcast out of the park. I'd love to become a pledge hammer, but due to recently being made redundant, I can't justify the money when I've got nappies to buy for a newborn daughter. Lots of love, Will. They don't, I, do, you don't need nappies for a, do- a newborn. No? No. No. Take them outside. Like a dog. Patreon. <laughs> Patreon needs your support. So yeah, so he has suggested a gimmick which is and he submitted it in the form of a limerick. Here is a wrestler with a crap gimmick. He would go by the name Limerick. He would wear green and be Irish, and his match would finish with a sick leg drop called Poetic. Mm, yeah, I I I don't think they're half rhymes at a stretch, some of them. Uh, I like the name Limerick. Mm-hmm. I just think that's good. <laughs> and I, d- I just I really like the idea of it. Um, but I don't think that's a good limerick. And the great thing about haiku was, was, it, was a it was a haiku. perfect haiku and it got over everything. I just think, yeah. I don't know if we've shared this on the... I think we might have done it on the podcast, but not in the main show itself. But mm. we met the guy who submitted haiku. Yeah, yeah. He, met, he came up to us at a Rev Pro show and said, I'm the guy who did haiku. And we freaked out more than... <laughs> I was we, so excited. Yeah, we were so happy. Yeah. And it, it sort of become... I wanted it, my photo with him. Yeah, it became that way round. Yeah. Um, where are we? Uh, so this one comes in from Jake Leach on August 11th. Right, here goes. The Jackals. A tag team akin to Sanity who act like wolves in a pack. Big twist. This is a woman's only trio who will grab a random guy when mixed tag team action is in play. The team goes as follows. Rachel, aka the Alpha. A larger Scottish woman with fiery ginger hair. She walks to the ring snarling at the audience and will often punch the commentators or knock out the referee before the match. Her signature is the pile of S. And as her partners, uh, batter the opponent and throw them into the Alpha. And she will do a Baron Corbin-esque deep six and the other will lay on top of them to earn the pin. Jacqueline, aka the Beta, a frail Welsh woman with dark hair. She acts as though she is both frightened and in love with the Alpha. Her finisher, the killing blow, the curb stomp, and the Omega. No one knows much about the style of the Omega. She will constantly change fighting style, coming out face or heel depending on the lunar cycle. The three would enter to virgin state of mind by Kay's choice. Craig, you want to talk about like that barista gimmick having obscure music? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, we all know that song. <laughs> I'm, I'm humming it in my head right now. Not Hungry Like the Wolf by no. Duran Duran. Um, wearing fur over their ring gear, the Titantron will show where the moon is within the lunar cycle. Only the Alpha will have music when entering alone. Love you guys from Jake. I don't know. I, it's, uh... There are people listening to the podcast who will have checked to see if they've accidentally paused mm, it there. We should do that more often. <laughs> I There's a lot going on there. And it's definitely consistent, but is it any good in a crap way? I don't think it is. Mm. I appreciate the effort, though. And I like the Alpha, Omega, and Beta thing. Uh, but, that, that I mean, those are all Greek letters, and you've gone for a very... Um, what What's the word for British folklore stuff? Folklore. No, you, you know, like... A, Pagan, pa- pagan <laughs> stuff, pagan stuff. This I, show's I, fallen off a cliff. Yeah. You are really flagging after lunch, aren't you? I just, I just, 
You had a, it's you confused had, me that one. You had such a heavy lunch. You have been really flagging this it afternoon. Was, it was 100% carbs. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I, I think it's going to be the same as previous, previous weeks this year so far. Yeah, no, no signees. No signees. And if you want to submit a question to the mailbag, all you have to do is become one of our awesome pledge hammers over on Patreon, which has now got its new awesome super duper revamp redo. Yeah, and any any level, any level, can, any amount. Mm-hmm. So the bottom at the moment is five dollars but you can pledge one dollar and you can still send in a question sure can yeah absolutely this comes in from kenneth houston obviously once you've become a pledge hammer leave this in the community section if you email it to me it could get lost so best to leave it in the patron community section kenneth houston asks i have a really hard two-part question for you imagine if you could have an undertaker at every pay-per-view well not an undertaker but a legend from the the greater years uh that was so you can have a basically if you can have a legend at every pay per view, yeah. uh, like it was always WrestleMania. Uh, what superstar would you choose, and what pay per view would be theirs? Oh, okay. So like a themed. So the pay-per-view. Undertaker is always going to be at WrestleMania. Like yeah, every yeah, yeah. every time a WrestleMania comes around, you're like, oh, what's the Undertaker's match going to be? It's not so much the Undertaker; it's the Undertaker's streak. Because I feel like the appeal of Undertaker at WrestleMania was lessened when the streak was broken. It was just like, oh, the Undertaker's getting a match. Mm-hmm. Whereas before, it was like, oh, there's something really big at stake here. I say that his match with Shane McMahon did not draw you in. Well, that had so much at stake that no one box. that no one paid attention to and the brand split happened anyway <laughs> Shane McMahon was made just GM, anyway. GM of whatever or commissioner uh, it's um, so obviously like I, I would like a I think Undertaker's more suited for a Survivor Series thing I guess having Bray Wyatt a Bray Wyatt theme so a good Wyatt family theme for a Survivor Series if War Games became a pay-per-view Undisputed Era. That feels like their pay-per-view, doesn't but it? what he's after is a legend, so not a current ah, star. Ah, yeah. What, Bray Wyatt isn't a legend? <laughs> Depends on what uh, era of uh, fandom you are. I would have a uh, No Way Out, and it would be The Good Great pull. Carly. Good pull with your No Way Out. That's nice. Um, I was thinking about this, uh, only because it was mentioned on um, Something to Wrestle. But there is a generation of wrestling fans who will have only heard Michael Cole do commentary because he's been doing it for 20 years mm. in this company now. And when he retires, there will be a generation of wrestling fans who will say, like, the next guy, oh, he's no Michael Cole, though, is he? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, do, I don't think that will happen. Though, I think there will be, though. I think there will be. I think I go, oh, thank God. Oh, good. Lord. It depends on who replaced it. Cause yeah. If it's worse, have you heard who's commentating the Rumble? Of Jerry? It's Cole, Jerry, and JBL. Oh wow, JBL! Why I didn't, on I didn't earth know would that. you do that? Mm. Well, considering that Corey's basically doing the JBL character and he knows the product, mm-hmm. why would you just put JBL out there to just say things to give cultaholic material? <laughs> so, uh, Russ is probably Russ like, "Oh, crazy. thank God, <laughs> I've needed this." Yeah, um, I haven't really given an answer. You're going with the great Carly. That was a joke, though. No, I don't think it was. You, you go. Let me think. Let me think. I'm going to say who's a who's a legend. Uh, I'm going to say, actually, do you know what? I'm going to say John Cena. I would like to have a, a one John Cena match a year. I think that'd be always really nice at SummerSlam. I think like it's a good time for a Cena match where he can wrestle a younger guy. And maybe th- and that's the, th- mm. the always the same thing. It's just like I want someone from NXT to challenge me for a match at SummerSlam, and he sometimes he'll win, sometimes he'll lose. That's nice. I like that. I can't think of anything, so move on. Cool. Ryan Sanderson asked if you had the ability to get any wrestler to appear in the Royal Rumble, signed to another company or not, as a surprise entrant, who would it be? CM Punk. <laughs> I was going to go with Jerry Ryan, with the penis druids. With the penis druids, yeah, yeah, that'd be good. I mean, I'd pick, I'd pick Punk over Omega, the Young Bucks, Cody. Yeah, it used to be Kurt Angle, but yeah, <laughs> I've been burnt by that. Uh, Noah Trombley asks, "Do you think WWE is purposely making Raw look terrible in order to make SmackDown look like the <laughs> A show and make Fox believe they got the better deal?" To me, it felt like Raw really started nosediving when the Fox deal was announced. I know it sounds crazy, but I think WWE have done crazier things. No, they haven't. No, they have not. That's crazy. That's that's well crazy. That's conspiracy theory levels yeah. of just why would you? I genuinely think 
they're all they're all like this is the way you put on a wrestling show Absolutely. we're doing great yeah. stuff and we're not gonna but we're gonna save most of our great stuff till after the football season ends like that's when like that that's the real reason raw's been so bad recently because they the wwe historically do not try when they're going up against monday night football in the states and you can tell that this week where they were not going up against football you had a title change alexa bliss topless braun flipping over a limo you had big things happen ec3 smiling on camera and then walking away exactly huge draws have you heard uh heard, have you heard why uh the nxt debuts have been this way because no one knows what they're doing. That, and Vince's order, and this is according to The Observer, Vince's order was, we need to get their faces on TV so that people recognise them. So when we eventually do decide what we're going to do with them, people will then know who they are. What about the video packages? Well, there's only so many that times I've had to play that video through... package, mate. I am glad that I don't have to watch EC3 opening <laughs> that goddamn door! Uh, what have we got next? Uh, Diamond Crusader. You may remember him mm. from last week. He was the one who revealed the fact that you have a thing for animated bunny rabbits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he has asked here, do you remember Space Bears? Yeah, I do. I'm currently at episode 30 of the Flickr and Myth podcast, and it's been about 10 episodes since I've heard an after credit Space <laughs> Bears story bit. <laughs> Obviously, I will notice if you ever continued the story on the podcast, but do you remember Space Bears? Uh, P.S. The reason why all of your podcast, uh, awesome podcast isn't enough is because I need 14 hours of podcast per week for my part-time job. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so Space Bears, when Luke and I used to do the Flickr and Myth movie podcast about movies, the one of the working titles of Star Wars episode eight, eight yes. was Space Bears. Yeah, so we created <laughs> <laughs> our own version of what would become The Last Jedi that was mm. set after the events of The Force Awakens, but it was called Space Bears. And it was about Luke Skywalker having to work with a bunch of roly-poly, cuddly space bears. Yes, because you and I had fantasy booked this yeah. storyline, whereas essentially like um, gummy bears, but crossed over with Star Wars. Well, they're, you mean Ewoks? <laughs> Suppose they were. So, yeah. uh, they're essentially Ewoks, but a bit more cuddly. And there was Bouncing a talent there and everywhere. There was a talent show. Yes, that that's they had. right. <laughs> and I ripped off. A, a skit from um, mm. Police Squad, episode one, where they were mistaking people's names and yeah. words, which is very funny. You should go check it out on YouTube. It's very good. So, yes. Not, I, not I, Space Bears. Don't check out no, Space Bears. No, absolutely not, because it's really, really rubbish. It's not rubbish. It's I'd just it we, rubbish. we didn't finish it. <laughs> <laughs> because we got very bored. We got bored. Was that, the f was that the start of us doing the after credits? The post Maybe. P creds. P creds. The hashtag P creds. Uh, Cameron Sykes asks, what surprised you more? A new rival wrestling promotion to WWE or the re <laughs> realisation Ghostbusters 3 is actually happening? I'm a... Uh, yeah, definitely AEW surprised me more. Even though with all the reports and stuff, Ghostbusters news just washes over me now. It's Ghostbusters 3 for me. Yeah. Came out of left field, didn't it? Like, I know Danny Aykroyd last year was saying, like, oh, we're working on things. But he's been saying that for, like, 30 mm. years. He's been saying that since the first one. We're working on another film. And you just, after a while, Danny Aykroyd says something. You're just like, all right, mate. Yeah, we've heard it all before, Dan. Yeah, maybe I'm confusing surprised with cared. Mm, yeah. Because I, I just... I'm not surprised by either, but I care about the AEW one. I was, I was stunned at how little you cared about this when I was mm. telling you about it over pizza yeah. last night. God, what an eventful pizza I that was. I was so excited. The to Revival are well. uh, uh, handed in their notice. Ghostbusters 3 is happening. I, I, I got to show that teaser trailer to my wife when I got home, mm. and she was like, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what do you mean, is that it? It's the theme song. It's the song from the start of the first movie. But it's not sung by Fallout Boy, so I don't care. Yeah, with a rap. Uh, Marcel Jura has got our final mailbag question for this week. He says, I do listen to you guys a lot. Bracket. In fact, I've not missed one episode, news or podcast, since Luke arrived. So, Close bracket. So Marcel sent us in that lovely German care package. He certainly did, mm. yes. Oh, you had the mulled wine over Christmas. We didn't get to drink Tasty. on the Christmas episode, yeah, did we? Yeah. Uh, and I have the feeling we share a lot of opinions and taste, not only in wrestling, but also in comic books, games and movies. So when I hear something from you guys I would never agree on, it feels odd. Ooh. For example... The Street Profits do sweet nothing for me, and I can't see anything exciting in their matches, characters, 
or promos. It is a strange feeling. Like, just like when a friend of mine tried to explain to me that Randy Orton is an interesting character. My question is, what are some views of the other wrestle talkers you cannot understand even with goodwill? Love you, bye. Swabian pasta guy, Marcel. Yeah, that, that delicious crisp. It did the look pasta. like crisp. It looks and so I, much like crisp. I was going to say, I was not the only person who made that mistake because someone else picked them up and said, like, oh, crisps. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, d- I guess, uh, well, I, I don't know if I have any, but Randy Datsun cannot comprehend that people actually like red wine and dark <laughs> chocolate and stuff that isn't Ribena and candy. Yeah. And he's just there. Like, I just, he, he, he said the other week. Uh, no, no, you're, you're all just lying. You're all pretending. I was like, it's not, it's not possible. It's not possible that taste buds mature and you like different tastes when you get older. It's he's like, no, it. no, eating his lemon curd sandwich on white bread. It's amazing how that happens, isn't it? Before I was 30, I did not like olives. Yeah. And I did not like mushrooms. But since turning 30, I know I love olives. And I, yeah. and I eat mushrooms so much more now than I would have done, ever done previously. I'm even starting to come around to cauliflower, which I've never particularly been big on. And, that, and there was a period in time where I was like, don't like this red wine stuff, it's very bitter. But then all of a sudden, I turned, I think I was probably about 19, and I had some, and I was like, this is a taste sensation. This, this is, is a, excellent. The nectar of the gods. I, I want more of this. My dad was furious because <laughs> he, like, what red wine buys had to go up in stale. I was 25, I opened the fridge of my shared flat and I smelt someone's Stilton, and I used to hate the smell of that. Mm. And I, for, like a pregnant woman, I just got this urge. I ate that whole damn piece of Stilton. <laughs> it was, and uh, ever since, I'm a big Stilton fan. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't think that's what you were asking, Marcel. I think you probably wanted a lot more wrestling stuff in there. No, I think that's probably uh, one. <clears throat> well, I, I'd I, say we widely agree on most things. Yeah. Which is weird when we when we disagree on Is stuff. there anything that you see in the comments that you disagree with? Um, when people say Laurie's better or when you're better. Like, well, that, I'm yeah. just here for Luke. I disagree strongly with that. I don't know that uh, or Cultaholic are better. <laughs> uh, those bits. Uh, but most of the criticism I wholeheartedly agree with. You shout too much. Yep. You, your titles are too alluring. <laughs> you, you made me click a title. <laughs> like a, Guilty as charged. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think there's anything in the wrestles. Uh, I've meant to mean Laurie ever disagree on something? I don't think so. Although I will say, though, that like, I think the Street Profits are ace. Mm. I think they're so, so good. That's probably because like me and Laurie on the NXT review were just talking about how awesome the Street Profits are. Like I, I just think that Montez Ford is just like, he is a big ball of charisma. You, like, you've predicted he'll be a WWE champion. Like the to top be. one, yeah, not yeah. just a champion. Yeah, no, I think, I think he has to be mm. at and some point. Until they wrestle on a takeover, I don't care. That S- is, funny enough, what the title of our video is basically about. What? Why haven't they pushed them? They've been there for years and they haven't mm. done anything so far. They've not even had like a throwaway takeover match. So, uh, of course, takeover is next weekend. We'll have our Wrestle League predictions up and all your all you Patreon pledges. The Wrestle League will be happening for you too. This will be the first one you can all vote for. This is like, you know, Royal Rumble will be the start of the first season of Wrestle League, if you imagine that. And it will culminate at WrestleMania. I think I'm going to have to explain this loads of times. Yeah, because even I don't get it. Yeah, it'll, 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 it's just, just a slight overlapping. Ours ends at Royal overlapping. Rumble though, right? Ours ends at Royal Rumble deciding the punishment and the winner. But then it also begins at Royal Rumble. So the, the Royal Rumble predictions count as both the end of the current one that we're doing and they are also the beginning to act as a good jumping on point for everyone for the next season I think I follow so all the ones apart from our rumble predictions will be wiped Mm -hmm. and we'll start again from the rumble predictions also there's a lot riding on takeover and rumble because we're all joint on points going into it thanks to NXT takeover UK well also thanks to me being screwed Oh, it's an announcer's desk, not a table. <laughs> Tell that to comments. So that, of course, that's next uh, Saturday for the NXT TakeOver. But also next Saturday is WrestleGate's debut show. WrestleGate are a new promotion in the UK. They're up in Nottingham, but they're, they're a great bunch of guys. They partnered with Will Ospreay's promotion down here, close to us, and they have, they're taking quite an interesting approach to starting their new promotion, and that's filming a behind-the-scenes documentary thing to go up on YouTube to show what it's like sort of pursuing your dream. There's a wonderful line. In, so we've got a whole 
documentary. It's like seven minutes long. It's going to play when I finish talking. And there's just this lovely line when Gary, who's the promoter, is talking. He, he, he kind of realises, oh, I've wanted to do this for 25 years. And he's doing it now. Like he was talking about playing with toys as a kid. And then he turns to the guy next to him, who's just this, you know, just a guy working for him. He goes, how old are you? And he goes, like, 22. And he says, I've wanted to do this longer than this guy has been alive. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like such a wow moment. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, here is the, 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 the first episode of their documentary series. In terms of promoting shows, this is what you've always wanted to do? Always. Yeah. Since when? Do you, um, did you ever used to play with uh, wrestling figures when you were little? Like my brother's outside, he'll probably laugh because I just did it for like, till I was about 16. <laughs> That was it. That's all I ever did was play with these wrestling figures. But I didn't just play with them. I created storylines. I wrote it all down. And it would be stuff I'd maybe seen in, um, in WCW, NWA, WWF, or just my own uh, imagination. It goes back to there. I never had aspirations to be in the ring. Never wanted to be in the ring. What, eight or nine? Eight or nine, maybe. Maybe a bit... Yeah, probably than that. I don't even know how long I've been been a wrestling fan. It's always been there, you know. So this has been a pipe dream for you for twenty five years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose so. That's crazy, right? That's mental. Twenty? How old are you? Twenty one. Fucking longer than you've been alive. <laughs> Shit. August, August last year was when I really started considering could I do a show. Originally I wanted to buy a promotion, it didn't work out and when it didn't work out I kind of hit the reset button and it, it was the case of okay I need to think of everything that I need structurally and uh, you know names and etc and then yeah, it was created in a swimming pool. Wrestle game. Yeah, mate. It was created in a swimming pool. Yeah, it was created in a swimming pool in Barcelona, Spain. One of the biggest reasons why I'm doing it is my daughter's two, and I keep saying to her, What do you want to be when you're older? And then I don't want to be at the point where I go, oh, you need to follow your dreams. You need to make sure that you follow your dream. If she says, Daddy, did you do yours? And I'll be like, well, no, I didn't. Jay, you know? that how can I tell her to follow something if I didn't do it? I got towards the end of the holiday and it was, I'm going to do this. Even if it was one show, I'm just going to do one show. And then at least when I sit back, I can think, yeah, I've done it. At least I've had a go, you know? Entrance through here, big screen, big screen. And then we've got the barriers, probably coming up to like here maybe, maybe the start of the ring, maybe here. And then I reckon this is gonna be the center. Gray line is the bar area. And then we can go back three or four rows there. Three rows here, three rows here. Entrance for the customers. And then talent over there, so. Yeah. Good. Excited. Yeah. <laughs> Two weeks. Two weeks. This is this is nine to five. This is what me and Sam are doing. Other than outside of WrestleGate. Sam over there lovely is cleaning them. And we test them. And then these go back out on sale and then um, we sell them wholesale. So anywhere in the world really. Sam's the one that really is, was the person that pushed forward WrestleGate. Sam does all of the, the boring bits, I guess. Does all the paperwork and bill, paying the bills and yeah, he does that and I do all of the creative side, the booking of the talent, um, venues, uh, you know, and everything else that comes with, with running a wrestling promotion. What 
were your influences, Gary? Probably, yeah, mainly, uh, you know, New Japan, Dragon Gate uh, the, were the biggest ones. But I think MMA has played a huge part in that, and MMA has been a big, a big part of my uh, um, fandom as well, so I really enjoyed that. And I think that bringing those two together and having aspects that the UFC play really well, you know, they're doing wrestling better than wrestling's doing wrestling in some cases, you know, especially with their countdown shows or their um, hype videos, build-ups and things like that. That's very much wrestling, um, and they're kind of beating wrestling at, at the minute. Um, and they're, they're things that I really want to put into WrestleGate. The ideas were there and have always been there of bringing my personal view, my personal preferences, so the way that they do things in Japan, bring them here, but then mix them with the, the next crop of talent that are unsigned by anybody. Because, you know, there's so many people getting signed by the WWE and there's so many people under that that are just phenomenal and let's give them a chance to mix with these big Japanese stars and give them a platform to potentially go off into Japan or go off to, to wherever, you know, let, let's be that, that launch pad for people. Hello, sir, how are you? Good, you all right? See you. Right. You all right? Yeah, yeah. Doing well, sir. We're in the Stratford Circus. First ever WrestleGate Pro match. So uh, we're about half an hour till show. So uh, yeah, pretty exciting times. It's a bit, a bit surreal now. It's about to happen, the first one. So we have Sean Custom and Robbie X. Uh, first ever WrestleGate Pro match, exhibition match. And then me and Will will go out and uh, make an announcement. Yeah, two big things for us tonight. So. Really, really excited. Thank you. Thank you. Big kick out. I get angry. Half seven. The go time. Hi, man. Three oh, minutes. Right. Fucking three minutes. All right. All right. All right. Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. About two, two and a half years ago, I paid to watch Royal Spire wrestle. And now, I just got in the ring and announced a double show with him. How crazy is that? Like, uh, not a weight's been lifted, but I kind of feel like I can breathe a little bit now and just uh, count the days down. Since I was eight, eight years old, I wanted to do it. And we've got two and a half weeks. It's going to be good. Can't wait. Are you coming, Dad? Yeah, I'm coming. Yeah. What's the most important thing to you? The single most important thing to you? Ava. Of anything? Ava. Ava, that's it. Ava, number one. And, it's, and that's horrible because, like, uh, I love my wife to bits, you know, my brother and my mum, but uh, <laughs> now you got me. <laughs> Ava is everything, so yeah. Well, that's WrestleGate Pro. Their debut show is next Saturday, January 26th, I believe, in Nottingham. So click the link in the video description below if you're around the area or want to travel to get your tickets. I'm sure it'll be very good. I'm sure it's going to be an excellent and I'm show. I'm looking forward to see how the show goes. That is all we've got time for for this episode, so please click the videos that have just appeared here. And, of course, this button, which will subscribe you to the Patreon. We should put the Patreon button here.
Good to remind me. Yes, we should probably put that. In the, I'm going to put that in the document now. Put that Otherwise in the I, will, I will forget because we've relaunched it and we want to hit 1,500 patrons. I've been Ollie Davis. This has been Luke Owen, and that was rambling. <laughs>